It's time! It's time! It's Jam Dummy Time! Oh, the, the intro's over. Damn, my bad. My bad. <laughs> you work on the air conditioner? I gotta start a fucking show and you work on the air conditioner? I was turning on the on-air light to see if it worked. That's how, that, that, that is how you want to fucking start out. A fucking milestone show of JFW by sitting there working on your fucking air conditioner. I said, okay, let's get going. I'm just saying, we're on air. I know. And I, I get a big fucking camera and go over your fucking asshole. While fucking Neil you know, Nubby's up there strumming his, you know, guitar or fucking uh, bell like a guitar, I'm seeing her getting my mind right. I look up and boom, there's your fucking Pornhub ass fucking trying to mess up this entire entrance of a milestone fucking show. This is the uh, 200th, right? Now it is. This is how the show starts now. You caused this. To everybody that saw my butt, uh, I apologize. I think this is time for an internet apology video. And the, and the fact that this is the first video episode that we are releasing in the longest of time, this is what they get. Oh, Koa, man. Koa, Premium Koa, content. Koa wants to call me a fucking bully for all the bad things I say to you. This is why. You had one opportunity to make a good impression on the first video release for JFW in the longest time, and you're like, oh, let me fiddle with the air conditioner. It's a warm day out. Also, we're on air. And it's on air. I hate you so much. He's not wrong. We are on the air. We're live, pal. I, I hate you. We are you. live, and you, you got to do your thing now. There is. Working on the fly, brother. <laughs> There's only <laughs> one 200th episode for JFW. And you've taken this from me now. What else can I say except you're welcome? I hate you so much. I, I don't have a lot of regrets in my life, but you are one of them. And that's a quote from your father. Flash Harris? The other one. Oh, dad, dad. Okay, got it. There we go. I think Flash did say that, too, though. I wouldn't be surprised. Aw, damn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. Well, it's that time again to step in the ring with the greatest faction in podcast history. Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW podcast. Hosted by Travis D. And I am the Rocket Pro Chicagoland champion, Nubby the Amazing Turtle. And I am the podcast Papa Pac-Man, a.k.a. PX. I'm not trying to What the fuck are you doing? Well, you know, we had a lot of gold um, on our show, and I was like, well, Nubby has... The Chicagoland Championship. I ha- I have a belt in my uh, bedroom, so I was like, well, if we're doing a video show, why don't I show the fine folks of the internet a uh, big goal? Cool. So just out of curiosity, because you're showing that belt, you imply that that belt is just as important as the one Nubby has? Well, I mean, it's 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 pretty nice, okay. like Nubby's belt. So tell Nubby that you feel that that has as much value as his belt then. Well, this one was two thirty nine at a at a disc replay. Mm-hmm. Nubby you bought won it. His. Nubby won his. Yeah. So because so. Nubby won it, he's entitled to show it. Pun intended. You, however, put your fucking toys away so we can get started on this show. Okay. All right. Put your toy away. One, one more. One, just one more look. There you go. Yeah, one more look. One more look. What, does that say PX on it? I haven't had time to have a Pac-Man. Oh, fuck it, Hal. Throw it away.
Uh, well, throw in the trash. You think just, I am Medusa on WCW? It just, it just got worse. It got even better. It doesn't even have a dash. It literally just says P space X. It wouldn't let me put the space in. Oh, hell's bells. There was a bit of a limit. Yeah. But I'll make do with what I got. That's good. You put that away Best now. Yeah, one more luck. I'll put it away, child. Okay. Oh, fucking hell. Guys, we are here. It's the 200th episode of Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW podcast. Uh, this podcast, technically, if you look at the time frame, did start this time six years ago. Um, I'm excited to see what the future holds. I'm a little bummed out on where it has landed because of certain people on this fucking show. Come on, nubby. So, wait a minute. So, it actually started at this time? I believe the first episode was around, God, I don't want to say it was June 17th. I can look it up real quick. But, That's yeah. 643. 650. Oh. I, your, clock is, your clock is wrong. I will bury you. June, June <laughs> okay, 3rd. Next time, you're right. June 3rd, June 3rd was our first episode. Uh, June 18th was our third episode. What day are we on? We're on 19th, so... Well, look at that. So we had three episodes in. Uh, yeah, so six years ago this month, we uh, started out just regressing the Jam Daily Podcast. It was with me and Dizzle J. Over the years, it grew with more people coming on, such as Dally, uh, Superfan Steve. Unfortunately, uh, none of them can make it here uh, over the course of the last year. Uh, Nubby showed up. Pac-Man was invited. And... Uh, this is where we're at now. 200 episodes in. Uh, we got some questions for some uh, listeners and viewers. So we thank you for those. And we'll go over those and stuff after we finish up the business side of the show. Where we got to talk about the results of uh, Dreamwave. Dreamwave, yes. Plus, uh, I think we have a couple matches for IPW and uh, SCW coming up this weekend. Uh, guys, before we dive into any of that, I'll remind you that this episode is brought to you by CarterComics.com. Pac-Man, that's a real sponsorship, so take notes of that when you go back to the Lovely Intoxicated Podcast and you make up stupid ones that don't exist. This is a real uh, sponsorship with real money. It's a one-stop shop for all your comic needs, or it'd be great at a raw. Carter Comics has got them all. Go to their uh, store, fill up your cart with all their amazing products. Use a discount code FREAKNET, that's F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T. Now be wise of the discount code. Because you can use it over and over and over and over. Whereas a promo code, you just it's like a one night stand, uh one and done. That's right. That's right. Pac-Man's mother knows all about one nighters. Uh not only can the discount code be used at uh, CarterComics.com, but it can also be used at uh, the four different eBay accounts that they own. You can find the links to all four of those uh, at CarterComics.com on their homepage. Again, FreakNet, F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T, will save you 10% on your entire purchase, whether it be from their website or from their eBay accounts. Again, thank you, Carter Comics, for being a real sponsor of the podcast. Wait, was the one-nighter thing a reference to Flash Harris being my dad? Yes. Okay. We're just getting stepmother factor in and all this stuff. Oh, the hot girl with the goofy the hot name? Girl. Oh, uh, Zoe. Yeah. Yeah. Still don't know if she's dating fucking JJ now. Our our show didn't make that very, very clear, but we do know she was yeah. reading. That's important. Do you, it's though? Do you, know, are you sure she wasn't reading and not trying to find help? Well, you can find a lot of help in a book while reading. True. Like a self-help yeah. book. I don't know. I, 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 was, I was, you know, ready, waiting. I was told that I was going to get some answers on if that was true or not. And all I got was a lot of, uh, what do you think? Which is the stupidest answer you can ever give anybody. But, uh, hey, you know what? The friend zone ain't really a bad place for people like JJ. So, um, enjoy your... You know, dreams, brother. All right, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Dreamwave. I want to get that started. I want to get through uh, some of this uh, work before we dive into some fun things. So, cool. All right. Uh, Back when right, you gonna... said, "Shut up, Nubby." 
Yeah, shut up, Nubby. Thank you. I was going to say, I'll follow Nubby, along while she does it. Shut the fuck up. When did we switch roles, Pat? I don't know, but I, yeah. I, I'll i take it. Shut I'll take the it. fuck up. Wait, which one of us? Yes. Both of us. Okay. Pat, All right. Nubby, did you watch Dreamwave? I watched it this morning, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, Nubby, go ahead. I'm going to follow along with you, Pat. You just go ahead and take it. All right, cool. So the first match from Dreamwave, nothing from a good time from this past Saturday at Knights of Columbus in LaSalle was the four-star heroes of Chris Castro and Matt Nix versus Hartenbauer and what was supposed to be Mike Bennett, who um, had to step away because he had to go to AEW at the United Center. And um, who replaced him but, boom, boom, Colt Cabana himself. Uh, before the match, four-star heroes jumped Hartenbauer. And in order to even the score, Colt Cabana's music hit. Um, and in a competitive match, Hartenbauer and Colt Cabana win. After the match, uh, Colt announced that he will be wrestling during the double shot on April 4th and April 5th. Hartenbauer also announced that Mike Bennett will be back August 4th, as will Mance Warner and Manders. There will be a tables, ladders, and chairs match on night one. Awesome. Following this was Becca versus Kaya McKenna. Becca is new, right? I believe she was making her debut and introducing her ground rules for um, singing because she was going to perform a bit before her match. A um, couple of the ground rules was don't compare her to Taylor Swift and no witches. Kaya interrupted her before she could even start to perform. Um, Becca pinned Kaya McKenna and wound up uh, getting chased by Kaya after the match uh, for taunting her for losing. Hmm. Next, we had Stephen Wolf. Versus Connor Hopkins, the Heartbreak Coyote. Um, Damian DeShane came out to distract the ref. And Brooks Berna hit uh, Wolf while the ref was distracted. And Connor Hopkins defeated Stephen Wolf. After this, we had Seduce and Destroy, Bucky Collins and Aaron Xavier. Versus Axel Rico and Marco Marco uh, Cordova. Cordova. Now let's keep in mind it was supposed to be the Dope Kings, but they didn't show up. That's far right. As, as far as I know. Card subject to change. Glorious card subject to change. Um. So the made the ref ring. They made the ref ring the bell since they weren't there. But the team of Axel and Marco came out. Regardless, um, so Axel Rico Powder. Let me see what's going on here. So um, my notes make no sense. So basically, who, who, who wrote them? Who, who got you your notes? I did. Yeah, that makes sense. So my notes did not make sense. So now yeah. that I'm okay, now I'm making sense of it. Pow, uh, Zeke, right, was the manager through Powder in the eyes to, of Axel Rico. Uh, took him out of the equation, seduce and destroy, pin uh, Marco for the win. Uh, after the match, the Nasty Boys and Brooklyn Brawler came out to attack, seduce and destroy. There was a lot of they, everybody experienced Pity City, and uh, they beat down do, uh, seduce and destroy. You're like the nerdy kid in front of the class trying to get through a book report of a book he did not fucking read. I did watch the show. Did you? My notes <laughs> did not make sense in the order in which I wrote them. I didn't have my coffee yet at the point in the morning. <laughs> it's like, what? I'm like looking at my notes. I'm like, what the hell am I even talking about here? So, well, so did you take the notes after watching it or did you take the notes while watching? While watching. So how the fuck are they not in order? It's not that they're not in order. The way that I wrote them just didn't make sense. You know, it was a couple months ago. Fucking Nubby comes to me. Hey, man. I know you don't like him. 
I think uh, I think PX would do a lot of good for our show. Still feel that way, Nubby? I do indeed. I have Nubby's vote of confidence. I vote yes. <laughs> I also vote yes. Yeah. Travis, you're overruled. That's not true. Freiburg would uh, agree. Freiburg's always on my side. Freiburg, I don't care, you know, what he says. Nubby is an LIM, just for the record. But that's besides the point. Oh, we'll have court. There we must can, be court for this. We, I think we can arrange a court date. We should have a court date. Fucking A. Let's have a court You know what? Let's have a court date. Why we'll, not? Have a, we'll have a court date. I'll we'll have, have my people date. call your people. We'll set up a court date. I think that's how court works. Yeah, well... Okay. My people are Schultz and Freiburg, so I think I'll be okay. Well, I'll have to find somebody who will represent us. Um, <laughs> but we'll, you know what? We'll make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. We're oh, gonna, yeah. we'll settle this once and for all. Let me let me ask you a hypothetical question there, okay. uh, Pac-Man. Let's say they 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 side with me and say that he's technically not in the LIM. Would you accept it and move on? Um. Well, that would be. Uh, well, well, <laughs> that would be that would have to be determined. Uh, once we find the once we see the facts of the case, um, and if the ruling is fair, and as long as the ruling is found on fair grounds, I would be willing to accept that result. But also, we would need a judge. Well, yeah, we'll need someone impartial, which uh, maybe I'll get a hold of Saint. Maybe he could uh, be the impartial judge. I don't think that. he's impartial. He's very impartial. fair. He's a very fair. I mean, judge. I saw the comment Where thread I? from Where over the weekend. He is not impartial. He will be. He will be. He will be impartial. He's insane. But I'm gonna find a way to get this court thing going, and there's gonna be a contract written up that we'll both sign, saying that no matter what, we'll accept the outcome of the court date. And if he's part of LIM, then he's part of LIM. But if he's not, you can never induct him into the LIM. You have a deal. Perfect. You have a way to throw double jeopardy in there. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what else happened at Dreamwave? Was at the end. Uh, so the next match we had was Bobby Orlando versus Victor Iniestra. Uh, it was a very competitive match where Bobby. Orlando defeated Iniestra. Okay. Following this, we had the Dreamwave Tag Team titles on the line, uh, where the champions wasted youth of Dylan McKay and Marcus Mathers versus The Hype, which is Hunter Holdcraft and 12 Gauge. Um, I wrote that this match was the match of the night, another very competitive match where both members or both teams really fought hard. Uh, Wasted Youth do retain the titles. The next match was a four-way to determine the number one contender for Gringo Loco's Alternative Championship. Uh, We had Laredo Kid versus Aramis versus El Hijo de Vikingo versus Ares, and Vikingo wins and will face Gringo Loco for the title. We then had Florida Man versus Scotty Too Hotty. The crowd was really into Scotty Too Hotty. Uh, Scotty was going all over the ring, taking all over ringside, taking selfies with fans, uh, dancing with the fans. Uh, kids really, really loved him. Um, and Florida Man, seeing this, got on the mic and bowed to make sure that the kids get sent home sad. Scotty Too Hotty uh, was jumped by Florida Man, but managed to get back into the match, and Scotty Too Hotty got away with the victory. After the match, Scotty addresses the fans and tells a story about the late Tim White and says today is his last match in his 40s and thanks the fans for their support over the years. And lastly, we had a last man standing match between Christian Rose and Vic Capri. Uh, Christian Rose ripped up Capri's banner before the match, uh, which led Capri to throwing a garbage can 
at Christian Rose's head as he was getting to the ring. Uh, the fight went into the crowd. There were lots of instruments and weapons used in this match. Um, kendo sticks, chairs, you name it, it was in the ring. A um, couple highlights of the match for me was a sliced bread attempt by Vic Capri, which was turned into a tombstone pile driver by Christian Rose onto a chair. Another moment that, um, cause he, uh, Vic Capri came out with bombshell Shelley. Um, and at one point Christian Rose, uh, kidnapped in a way bombshell Shelley brought her into the ring and tried to make Vic Capri, uh, lay down for the 10 count or else he was going to harm bombshell Shelley. Shelley does get out of that though. Um, and Capri tries to mount a bit of last minute odds. Uh, offense the coyotes come out despite being banned from ringside for this match and the ref is taken out um just complete chaos there's no order but then comes earl hebner to the ring to officiate the end of the match now during the ending sequence christian rose pulled out some money to try to bribe earl hebner which at first earl hebner didn't accept but then, um, as uh, Vic Capri shoved Earl off of him, um, he was seen picking up the money off the ring mat. And then Christian Rose hit him. And Earl Habner did a fast 10 count, giving Christian Rose the match. So the South screwed you up. Coyotes are going to say Capri screwed Capri, but at the same time, at the end of the match, Earl Hemner ripped off his ref shirt to reveal a Coyote shirt. So the fence was in. Perfect. Did he sell the uh, the ring mats and shit at the end of the show, too? or Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> but I got the reference. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And it's weird, too, because I... I Pac-Man, is that the first uh, Dreamwave man show you've ever seen? That's the first one I've seen in full, yeah. Okay. Because I know, um, and a lot of it is Steve kind of educated me on the Coyotes and stuff since they are still fairly new to me, is that uh, the actions that Christian Rose had, Christian Rose had at uh, Kicks on 66 is actually norm for him down in Dreamwave. Like, he almost tones himself down in uh, Rocket Pro. So, um... I'm surprised that not, that's not match of the night for you, but I trust that you know enough about wrestling to pick match of the night, so that's awesome. Uh, by the video you saw, the crowd, was it standing room only, sold out? It was standing room only, sold out, um, packed house from yeah. everything that I saw. Um, I will say that was a very close second for match of the night. Right. You know who can't say that this past Saturday? Who's that? AEW collision. Treated. Mm-hmm. So I don't think seats too, huh? Yeah, I think <laughs> it was like, I think it was what, like 25% of the building uh, was filled? Something like and that. I heard I heard they brought in Gila Monster because they know he's good with being an inanimate object. They brought him in to be a, a seat in uh, section 300. Yeah, he's one of those goofy ass fucking poster boards that they're sticking in seats at fucking baseball games and shit. Yeah. You know what gets me is these fans of AEW, they try to justify that, oh, it's on the hard cam side. They don't do it. They, it's a normal. No, it's not. Because if you ever went to a fucking Monday Night Raw, I know where the hard cam is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, There's fans all around. They might open up a few mm-hmm. seats. That's normal. When are we going to start? A, now, look, I don't care about the this supposed war or whatever. I, I'm a, I'm still a fan of AEW, still a fan of WWE. I don't watch enough TV. I should be just because, you know, the podcast and it's wrestling. But let's just start being real and say they don't draw like you know. fucking fans think. Quit, yeah, I, just be real about it. 
See, and that's the thing I never said about why they're starting up a Saturday night show. That's what I don't get. It's like people say that WWE is running pay-per-views to, you know, because WWE wants to go after the independents. But actually, no. Because yeah. if you are a smart fan, you would understand Peacock, mm-hmm. Um, you can watch it any fucking time. Just like when, you know, NXT and AEW went head to head for the first year. Yep. Uh, did you know we had this thing called um, DVR? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's nutty. And uh, the whole reason I asked about the attendance at Dreamwave is, is to prove that independent wrestling is still fucking alive. And the fact mm-hmm. that a small bar or whatever the fuck the venue was uh, down in. Was it Marseille's? Whatever the hell the fucking location was. I can't remember off the top of my head. LaSalle. LaSalle. Um, can fucking pack out. And when CM Punk is returning to the United Center for AEW, they can't fill every fucking seat. And I think that tells you a lot about independent wrestling. Because my whole thing was, is like, cool. Here's another company that's going to... Here's, here's another wrestling show that's going to fucking try to pull fucking fans away from the independent scene. But proof doesn't fucking happen. And that's an amazing thing. Um, I do want to make a Dreamway show. I do hear a lot of great things. It's not about the talent that they bring in, you know, so much like, you know, these veterans, Hall of Famers. It's not really about them. It's cool to see them. But uh, I just, you know, I don't know where else I'm going to see Vic Capri wrestle. You know, so, I mean, I guess CSW, if I really wanted to go up to Chicago, I could. But um, uh, Hart and Bauer, I hear great things about. I don't know if I don't know where else he wrestles other than Dreamwave. I think he's more of a out west guy, but I guess so. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, um, no, I heard it was a great show. Um, I don't have IWTV to watch it. Uh, maybe I will get it back one day. I don't fucking know. Maybe we'll see. But good job, Pac Man. Thank you, other, sir. Other than your goofiness, you didn't do too bad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Write my uh, notes in order. That's my note for myself for next time. That's right. Just make a note. Do better. <laughs> Be less you. Oh, yeah. well, then where's the fun in that? <laughs> if I'm less me, you have one person that you're not as mad at. <laughs> then you like me more. And then if you like me more, then how can we have these nice, you know, conversations, these these back and forths? Okay. I'm going to tell you something right now, Pac-Man, and I hope you understand that you know, I'm being sincere when I say this to you. I don't have a lot of dead air on my show, so you don't have to keep talking to fill the space. I'm ready to move the fuck on. Now, you may need to continue to fucking jabber on over at the Lovely Intoxicated Podcast because there's a lot of dead air that you have to fill with fucking content. That doesn't happen over here. So get your point across and let's move the fuck on. That was my point. Point's been made. Oh, God. I wish I didn't enjoy having you around. I swear to God. I oh, just... oh. Is, that a, is that a confession? <laughs> you are. <laughs> You're accustomed to my face. Um, yeah. Yeah. You like herpes, man. Just got to learn to live with you. This Saturday, SCW comes back to Steam Howl Brewing Company for SCW Wrestle Rock Presents Dissension. It's going to be this Saturday. Uh, make sure you check it out. Information is on Facebook. Uh, do I really do it? Is, is giving the address necessary? I know you guys keep doing it, but is it really necessary? Yeah, because you got to know where we're going, you know. 450 South Spruce Street, Unit C in Mantino, Illinois. Uh, tickets are twenty dollars at Fit Body U, Steam Hollow, or reach out to uh, SCW to get your tickets, or just buy them at the fucking door. Just, just get there. You know, we'll be fucking, you know, you know, over motivated. Oh, how's bells? Hey, look at that. Fucking uh, Apex made um even for his uh, SCW debut. Fucking Mark. All right. Um, doors open at 6.30, both times at 7. Bands playing, all the good shit. Uh, just a few matches that have been confirmed and uh, official as of right now. 
We're going to see Eric Schultz take on James Creed, which is a match I've been wanting to see since Schultz got there. I think it's going to be a solid fucking showing. Uh, Johnny Chaos will be taking on the returning JPH. So I think oh, it's... finally got him out of the box, huh? Right. Uh, nothing against me hooks or any other competitor that Johnny Chaos has ever faced uh, be, uh, before now. But I think this is probably going to be his toughest competition yet. Well, this is JPH, and he's an asshole. And That's true. Uh, Lee Payne is going to be taking on Scott Spade with uh, a partner of his choosing, which he chose Kazile. Oh, that's not a bad choice. You know, it's weird to think that even though the SCW POW war is over, it's still little parts of it still existing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy Blaze will be in attendance at Steam Hollow. And I know he still has some issue with Scott Spade. So it's going to be interesting to see if he gets involved at all in the tag team match. Um, I know from being over at um, <clears throat> uh, POW Entertainment for their last show, Tiny isn't really uh, with Scott Spade anymore. So Scott Spade coming down to SCW with, I believe, the only backup he has would be Mistress Misery and now Kazile. Doesn't seem like he really has like you know an advantage in any way. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Carrot returns uh, to take Koan once again. Uh, I believe the title will be on the line. Apex, as I meant, it should be. Apex uh, is making his debut against uh, Odinson, the Berserker. Uh, and also, uh, we got uh, Times of Destruction is going to be in action. Uh, I believe we're finalizing a team with them uh, currently uh, as we speak. I'm, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm also fucking booking. I got other shit to do. Um, uh, Bonanza is also going to be in attendance and I believe there is one more match that is confirmed and that's going to be Mason Perks versus Acid Jazz. Ooh. That'd be a good one. That would be a really solid one. Uh, again, it's going to be this Saturday at uh, Steam How Brewing. Uh, make sure you get there early. Pac-Man, I'm sorry you're not going to make it. Unfortunately. I hate to miss it, but I will be at the show the next day in Richton Park at IPW. We're not there yet. But I will be there. I, I thought that was like the setup for a segue. No. Okay. Well. Wow. Shit. Wow. <laughs> Again, this Saturday, doors open at 6.30, bell times at 7. It's Russell Rock presents Descension. Replay will be the band that's going to be enjoying the uh, musical styles of. And, uh... Like I said, uh, Pac-Man will not be there, which means L.I.M. will not be there, which means it will be one of the best shows I have been to in quite a while. Like that, a slap in the face. Yeah, but I have um, a feeling that maybe two other annoying people will be there instead. Uh, Annoying annoying to you. The fucking children. They do look like Beavis and Butthead. Um, oh, and of course, uh, Warren Freiberg will be uh, at the show as well. Uh, title match uh, also being finalized. So that's still pending as well. But we'll see if uh, if I can convince Terry to allow my title to be defended uh, on the main shows as well. And uh, hopefully get a more acknowledgement than it has uh, so far. So. Uh, a couple of things still being finalized. I know it's getting pretty close to the show, but uh, obviously if you want to check out what else is happening, go to Southland Championship Wrestling on Facebook and follow them. Check out the events. Stay updated. And obviously, as we uh, are doing here on JFW, following Sunday morning after the shows, we are doing a live stream of uh, Southland Talk, uh, the SCW Roundtable, where I'm hosting it. Uh, I, I don't Nubby, I don't know if you're gonna be there or not. Uh Pac Man is so generous enough to moderate, is that correct? I'll be the sheriff of the I appreciate of the, you. Of, the chat, of course. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna be there, Nubby, or not, because I know you do got IPW the next night. The I'm next gonna work day, on so. it. I got just figure some shit out. Yeah. But, you know, I, I gotta get ready, especially uh for my big matchup. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about IPW and what's going on. Well, we could do that. Well, let me get let me just get riled up now about something else real quick. Gotcha. Power Hour last week. Who watched it? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I thought we were just gonna sneak fucking past it. 
No, we're not. No, I could have saved it for later, but it, it's going to I'm going to sandwich this shit. I'm going to start out hot, calm my ass down, then jump right back into it. Polly Tomaselli says I have a punchable face. <laughs> that might be true. I've been told that many a times. Sometimes I agree. Rocket Pro Wrestling. Give me Polly so he can punch me in the face. Ooh. Thank you. On to IPW now. As IPW returns to Richmond Park at the VFW Post 311 22341 Governor's Highway in Richmond Park. Uh, general admission tickets are $15. Kids, if you're 10 or under, it's only $10. Doors open at 1 p.m. Bell time, 2 p.m. All right, all right. Uh, only a few matches have been announced. I believe this might be it because. Um, <laughs> Well, I know you couldn't help yourself. All right. Um, um, we have a host. I just it's love the, how I just have, how I love how like I have to get this out of my out of the way first. And the only thing he said was he says I have a punchable face. Rocket Pro, give me Polly. Yeah, that's all I had to say. Of everything he said, that's the one thing you're focused on is the punchable face thing. Well. The way I see it, I could dwell on everything he's has said, but yeah. I just figured take the easiest part, which was him saying I have a punchable face. Solid. But if he has the balls to actually really do it, come and do it. You know. All so right. Rocket Pro, please make it happen. And the thing is, you have to do it at Rocket Pro because I don't understand how he doesn't believe the pop you get. Because you know what? He has never believed in me, ever. Thomas yeah. Ellie's never believed in me. I believed in you. I know you. That's why, I, I, that's why I invited you here to be part of JFW. And look at that. We have a lot of downloads. Right? Power Hour didn't do that. Shame on them. But I believe in you. I appreciate I'm o- I'm okay being the island of misfit toys if that's what it takes. I'm fine with that. Well, I mean, I was trying to take the easy way out of it, but you made me say he doesn't have the balls to punch me in the face. So now I'm that's right. That's, that's the shit. That's the shit you gotta say. You gotta poking, say that. poking the bear. Poking the bear now. Fuck yeah. I didn't want to do that on yeah. the 200 show. But wait, yeah. it is the 200 show. You got it. So why not, po- the- why not poke the bear? This is it, man. This is it. We're doing everything we said we're going to do, except for... I don't think I'm going to shoot on anybody. I don't know. I am not I doing that. it, because I'll get set up to do it. We'll see, we'll see uh, We'll see. how much time we got left. We, if we run if we run, uh, if we run a little too short, we got more time, maybe I'll just... Uh, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll shoot on people. I'll tell you what. I'll, make it, I'll shoot on one person, but you both got to agree on that person. We'll do that at the end of the show, though. Is it me? You both have to come to an agreement on one person. I will shoot on that person. I can shoot on you, Pac-Man. You want me to shoot on you, Pac-Man? I don't agree to it. <laughs> <laughs> want me? Want me? Want me? Want me? Uh, want me to start talking about fucking Pat Ackerman here? Well, if you do it like an Iron Sheik voice. No, I won't. I'll, I'll do it like me. I'll say some shit about you. I still don't consent. I'm gonna do it anyways. Now, thank you. You're welcome. You're officially now the person I'm going to shoot on. But I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put it to the very end of the show. That way, people who don't want to peek behind that curtain doesn't have to hear it. But I 100% shoot on you at the end of the show. 
I mean, we'd hate for you to be accused of bullying. That's how, wow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Fucking Koa, there. Koa, Koa wanted me to shoot. Damien Singh wanted me to shoot. Pac-Man offered himself up as the fucking... Uh, I did shoot. it as a joke. I didn't Too late, man. I, I didn't find it funny, so I'm taking it real. I'm going to shoot on you now. At the very end of the show, we're going to do everything. And then I'll let everyone know that if they want to live in the fucking uh, fantasy land to end the show now. Because I'm going to fucking bring some reality to this world. Because I'm going to shoot on you. And it's all going to be real. And people get accepted or not. But that's what it is. Aw, oh, damn. It's coming coming buddy all right um so as i was saying um the host of the show is the new and undisputed league Mm -hmm. champion damian gray solid choice and he gets to sit the entire show because he's gonna watch um over 20 competitors get in the ring and um fight to become number one contender for the league champion. Uh, Pac-Man, I won't do I won't shoot on you if you could tell me all twenty competitors and you have to be correct. Oh shoot. Um shoot is right. Shoot is right. Man, I'm gonna have a hard time predicting that. Um I'm sure the hot rod daddy Andy will be one of them. Sure. I'll say that. Okay. Um, I'll go out on them. Say Flash Harris will be one of them. Gotta be. I will say there will be an appearance by the Pineapple. Doubt it. It's possible. Surprise very, entrant. Very possible. Um, That's three. That is three. Um, three. I'll say Russell All Time will be in there. Four. Miles Mercer. Five. C Red, six. RVP, seven. Danger, eight. Uh, I don't think who else can guess. Jay Thunder, why not? Sure, nine. These are my guesses. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, shit, Johnny Knight was there last month. Sure, ten. Uh, so there, there's ten. All right. Let's say, I don't know, throw Quinn Wittick in there. Okay, that's 11. He got nine more. Uh, Muggsy. Newly engaged Muggsy, James. Congratulations. Congrats, Muggsy. That's 12. Throw in a little main event, Steve. Sure. 13. There's 13. And if I, I I have to be absolutely right. Okay. Motivation Mike. It has 14. Six more. Oh. Let me think of some more. Uh, <laughs> I'm, com- I'm coming to more. <laughs> uh, Corey. Corey McHenry. Yeah, that's seven. Oh, yeah. no, that's, uh, that's 15. You got five more. 15. All right. It's 15. Five more. I'm going to make more guesses here. Um, what about Kid Let? Well, wait. I got to come up with the list. You can't give okay. me ideas. Sure. And it's cheating. Sure. Uh, We'll say I'm going to make a real out-of-the-box prediction. Sure. Um, This will be legit out-of-the-box prediction. Um. We're going to see some surprise appearances from the final level. Shogun and Marche. I uh, got three more, man. All right. Um, I'm going to say we'll put in um, all right, three more. We'll throw Rion in there. Okay. Two Dubby. more. Took it to 19. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to come out and say it right away. Oh, God, I took you all the way to fucking 19. I can mention the guy who's right in front of you. I was working my way there. Working the gimmick. Working and the then, gimmick, brother. And then one more. One more. One more, man. My last guess. 
will be reset all the ARCs, so that one. Um, hmm. Oh, you didn't mention the Bro Bros. I already did mention. Bro you, didn't bro. Mention, you didn't mention Bro Bros. You mentioned the pineapple, but not the Bro Bros. Oh, that's right. I mentioned the pineapple. Um, pineapple. Number 20 will be another person that is very familiar to Rocket Pro Wrestling fans. Okay. It'll be someone who... Um, I just name the fucking guy. Or girl. Chuck Anderson. There we go. Okay, this is why you're getting shot on at the fucking end of the show. So shooted. You're going to get so shooted in. It's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> well, he was in the Rocket Rumble, so he does have experience. Yeah. He does. Yeah. All right, Nubby. What matches are scheduled uh, besides uh, Battle Royal? Um, well, we did mention Kit Lat. Yes. He'll be teaming with Quinn Wittick. Mm-hmm against E.J. Swanson and a partner of his choosing. Which I think is smart by E.J. Not E.J. Swanson not to mention his partner to not give them, you know, to give him more of an edge for the uh, for the tag match. Mm-hmm. Any guesses I, on who it could be? <sighs> hmm. I don't know, dude. See, the thing is, like, I, I've seen Quinn wrestle once at IPW, and that's when he did the match with Kid Lat. I can't really think of who I would think would have an issue with Quinn to where he needs to team up with Swanson. I would guess maybe Harris or, yeah, Flash. I can see Flash doing it, but at the same time, Flash doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would get involved in situations that's not his business. Like it has nothing to do with him, you know, why do it? Um I mean, Moon Dog. He could come back. I can see him doing it. Um yeah, I don't know. I really don't I don't know a lot about IPW and the history with uh with Quinn there to where I mean, we yeah. Now I know we know Stone's no longer at IPW. Right. So you can't drag that RPW feud from over there. I don't know. That's a tough one, man. If I had to pick somebody, I'd go Flash Harris. That'd be my pick. That's a good pick. Solid. Yeah. All right. Um, For the tag team titles, we got the Bro Bros. Defending the tag team titles against Diesel Tracks and Sean Danger. I like those guys. They drink. Yeah. It's a lot of there's a lot of under the influence happening in one fucking ring though. Yeah, one one side drinks, the other one smokes. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of DWI fucking action happening there. Ooh, if they had a stable, that could be their team name. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, you can't say driving while intoxicated. You have to do something else. Drunk Wrestlers Incorporated. There you go. Yeah, that could work. But the thing uh, is, you're not incorporating the high part when you say drunk. Ooh. Drunk parentheses and high wrestlers incorporated. No, that's, that's, just, man, that's a stretch, bro. It's a bit on the nose. It's too on the nose. A stretch. I think. Yeah, that's a stretch there, bro. Yeah. Bit on the nose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, the contract signing is going to happen between Backwoods Brown and Max Holiday for the future cage match. Unless Max Holiday decides to pull a backwards brown and not show up and wouldn't surprise me. And then someone's gotta give backwards brown the bad news and Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't wanna be that guy. Pac Man can do it. 
But will that lady with the red pants protect me like she did Sea Red last month? No, she'd let you die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bro, but you ain't no Sea Red, man. Well, I'm his grandson. That could be your future step grandma. Uh, grandma. Well, then, yeah, she could fight for me. I don't think she'd give a fuck about you. Oh. Well, I like the idea. I like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just want my grandma to like me. <laughs> How come she don't want me, man? <laughs> and then, um, one of the last matches announced so far. <sighs> It's the Champion Showcase, which features Intercounty Champion of Rocket Pro, Rian Skills, versus the IPW Alternative Champion, Steve Aaron, main event Steve, and yours truly, the Rocket Pro Wrestling Chicagoland Champion. Nubby, the amazing turtle. Ah, How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, man? I don't know what, how to feel, what to feel. I mean, why is this even happening? Who is behind it? Why? And I guess the other question is, and this one's really for Steve, am I at the disadvantage here? Well, is it is it just a triple threat between you guys with no titles on the line? Or has that not been decided yet? I believe it's just uh, no titles are on the line. It's just champion showcase. But my thing is, when it comes time to have to take out one person, maybe, who is Steve going to line with? Oh, yeah. No, you're screwed, bro. No, you're 100% on your own. So I, I had that feeling, too. I feel like um, unless Steve just, like understands what's going to happen, he better not, you know, he better give Rian the business. I don't think, I don't think Steve is the kind of person that's going to team up on you. But you can never say never. You know, I, I it, it's just one of those weird situations where, I mean, obviously you guys are all booked in a situation that, you know, you just, that's the match. You could say no if you want, but to back out of it would just be a little fucked up, you know. Um, Steve obviously proves to be a fighting champion. Uh, and I think that win is probably going to be more value to him than some kind of, uh, collective agreement between him and Rian going into this match. So I don't see it being a handicap in any way. Um, but to see him attack Rian is probably unlikely. If anything, he'd probably, you know, maybe shove him out of the way to get the pin. But I do. I, you know, I don't know. I just yeah. is it, you know them a lot better than I do, man. Um, uh, I just I. I think it definitely puts you in a weird situation. But at the same time, you know, we've seen tag teams go into triple threat matches and just implode, which, you know, could be a, you know, an advantage for you. Let them, you know, you know, let see if cooler heads prevail. And if not, let them beat the crap off each other until uh, somebody uh, gets shell shocked. I just, I, I just asked this question again. Um, we know friendships, you know, go out the window once the bell rings. Which friendship is going out the window? Uh, well, my guess, again, this is just me assuming. Um, I don't think they're going to go into it personally. I think they're going to try to keep it as professional as possible. It's just it's gonna all it's all gonna come down to which Rion you're gonna get. 
You're going to get the information liaison IPW Rion, or you're going to get the Rocket Pro Champion Rion. I think that, that is the person that you may find issue with at the end of the day. Steve, I don't think he's going to look at it in any personal matter other than, like, he's booked for a match. He wants to have the match. He wants to win the match. If he loses, he loses. He wins, he wins. But I don't think he wants to lose a friendship over it to where I think Rion really won't give a shit one way or another. But again, that's looking at the champion Rion, not the information liaison Rion. Because, in a sense, they are two different kinds of people. Yeah, I, and I, the thing is, I, I'll go in the ring with Rion all day, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to fight Steve. I don't. But I'm going to have to. And I hope Steve is ready. Uh, it's gonna be your first. It's gonna be your first in-ring competition with him, man. Yeah, we've. This will be the first time that we went against each other. Yeah, we've I always he, been a team. I know you did battle royals together. But we never really. I, I. If we count my debut at Steam Hollow when I was I Chucky, I do. We we fought a little bit, but it wasn't anything. This yeah. was. It was a battle it counts. royal. Fucking counts. This is. It, it counts because I'm making a point. I get it. I get it. I know. I get your point, but I think battle royals are a little bit different. Sure. Sure. Uh, we'll see. I'm I mean, that. I'm going to go in this match, though, with Steve, with the thing in the back of my mind about what he did to me in 2019. So I never got really. Well, I did get a little revenge on it, mm-hmm. but. I still remember. Um, it's got, it's going to be an interesting match, that's for sure. And uh, I'll be rooting for you. I just want to know who who put this together and whose idea it was. I have a feeling. I have a big feeling it's a uh, certain somebody gotten uh, the ears of IPW, but I cannot oh, yeah. speculate. From my experience as a host of IPW, is we have the ability to make matches. So that could be a Damien Gray thing. Could be. I don't know. Who are you predicting to win, Pac Man? Again, this is going to be another toss up. Yeah, who are you predicting to win? So we have Rian, we have Steve, and we have Nubby. Now. If I had to pick between the three, the one that would have the 141 and two-thirds percent of winning, you know what I'm going to say? Just to be controversial, I'm going to say uh, Rian. Uh, you know control? what? Any other time I'd be like, I- I'd say you're an idiot, but uh, you might be right. This might be an advantage to Rion. Because, again, you know, you don't know what Rion you're going to get. And if you're getting the Rion that, you know, we've all seen at Rocket Pro, um, the same Rion that defeated Maximus Orion at Kicks on 66 for the Intercounty title, then that's the real X factor, in my opinion. Uh-huh. And I do, I do agree that could be Rion because... As I sit here and think about it, yeah, those two are probably going to team up on me. I already see that. So I'm out of the equation. And then there's Steve, who I don't believe can beat Rian at all. So Rian wins. There. You want controversy? I said it. Steve cannot beat Rian. All right. See, I'm not, I'm not the bad guy here. Because I didn't say shit like that. That came from fucking Nubby. Fucking jump aboard that fucking bus, guys. All right, cool. Uh, anything else at IPW, or is that it? Uh, that is it, but here's just a reminder. Uh, VFW Post 311, 22341, Governor's Highway, in Richmond Park, Illinois. General admission tickets are $15. Kids, 10 and under, 10, just $10. Bell time, 1 p.m., bell time. No, doors open at 1 p.m., bell time, 2 p.m. Awesome. All right, guys, we got some questions that came in from you guys. I 
think I got all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the questions that I collected. Mm-hmm. And if I miss any, just uh, go ahead and uh, share them. Because I did try to screenshot from all of our posts. You know, I would have loved if everyone posted on the one. But I think there was like maybe four or five different posts that people messaged on. And I also got a few messages to me uh, by myself uh, personally. So uh, I want to start with Steve's. Uh, Aaron, the host of the Power Hour. Uh, who's uh, who's a guest uh, this week? Uh, Nuke. Nuke? Nuke. That should be a good one. I was in Power Hour, Tuesday nights, YouTube, Facebook. Ooh. Uh, Since Nuke is um, Power Hour guest this week, Steve, I know you're listening. Polly, me, Rocket Pro Wrestling. <laughs> Though I, do, is, I do believe that there may be a couple match announcements tomorrow for Fall Brawl. I thought that's what I have read. So if you're a Rocket Pro fan, and you want to know what's potentially going on next season, you're going to want to tune into tomorrow's show. All right, Steve asks, when does Turtle get a shot at the High Voltage Championship? Better yet, when do I get a shot at it? Uh, Steve won't get a shot at it. I'll be honest with that. Uh, Turtle, I promised you a title shot before the end of the year. So uh, before December. Best way I can tell you. Uh, Tommy did comment on this. Referee from uh, Southland said, uh, Steve, uh, we'll get a title shot after Johnny Chaos does. Uh, not true. Tommy doesn't dictate when title matches happen. And, uh, I don't have Johnny Chaos in a second high voltage title match anytime soon. So, uh, nothing nothing against Johnny. Great competitor. But uh, I don't see it fair him getting two title shots uh, before other people have opportunities uh, for one. So keep doing what you're doing. Earn it. Uh, That's the best way I can tell you. Um, Tommy did say, however, it could go either way. I'll be right there calling the action. Of course you would, buddy. Because I gave you that opportunity. You're fucking welcome. Ah, uh, lovely intoxicated men. Rocket Pro Wrestling super fan said, "Hi, yes, this question is for Travesty. Who the hell do you think you are?" Ah, uh, well, I am Travesty. I am the host of uh, the greatest wrestling podcast in the Midwest. In podcast history. Podcast history. Uh, Google me. I will show up. I'd be afraid to Google you. Google me. I will show up. Uh, Joshua Gillahan, the Giggle Monster, the Gia Monster, however you want to refer to him as. Why does Travis D. hate the Giggle Monster, Gila Monster, so much? And why am I the least like member of the LIM? Well, I'll answer your second part first. Um, because I didn't know who Pac Man's fucking brother was. So. Hey, that's right. Probably- you were last up until then, and then after I watched the la- latest episode of the Love Intense Game podcast, he's still last. Fucking bro got moved up. But the biggest reason I don't like the Google Monster, and I told you I was going to say this, regardless of the feelings hurt or not, is you say you're something that you're not. You're not believable as a monster. You can't tell somebody you're getting the horns when you talk like your horn has been sawed off, if you know what I mean. So if you want to be the Gia monster, you want me to respect you as a person, then be a man. Step up and be a fucking man. Challenge somebody like you got some tone in your voice. Because what you're doing right now, I'm not sold on it. I'm not sold on you being, you know, a second in command of LIM, regardless of what Pac-Man decides. Now, that's your fucking group. And anyone can lead in any way you see fit. And if you believe that the Gia Monster is the best person to be second in command to the LIM, that's your call. If I look at it, Bro's not even worth fucking you know, leading the very last guy of the LIM. He needs to step up, be a man, get some tone in his fucking voice, and come at Gabagool or JJ or anyone else who doubts him and prove them wrong. Until he does that, 
I don't care much for him. He was better as the honorary Ooze, but until he started calling himself the fucking Gia Monster, no. No. Okay, I don't want these all to be me. Yeah, a lot of questions. Uh, Carl Morris asked, should there be a workhorses takeover? I don't know what he was asking. Is he oh, talking I- about, like, if he was taking over a podcast, if they were taking over a show, I don't know what he, I don't know who this fucking dude is, first of all. But, no, uh, but you, you know the workhorse is better than I do, so if you want to answer it. I have, when it comes to the workhorses, yeah. anything involving the workhorses, one answer, no. So regardless of what it is, it's just no. No. Yeah, no, I agree with Nubby because, I mean, I'm still salty that they assaulted my pineapple in March. Still salty about that. Yeah. And one of them said you had an ego. How dare they? Uh, They also beat me up too, by the way, you jackass. How dare they be right about my ego? Uh, Tom Oakry as Turtle. It's your last match ever. Who is your dream op- uh, opponent? Love the fourth Mother Box podcast. I'll tell you, that's your buddy. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Last match ever. Who's your opponent? So this was actually a tough question because I don't know when my last match can end or when it will be. It could be 10 years from now and it could be somebody totally different mm-hmm. that I don't know who at that time uh what i can say say it happens in a month let's just go with that let's do this 20th anniversary you call it so get what so another year year and a half yeah i'll be uh august will be 19 (laughs) so august of next year is your final match we'll do that um okay well ideally if Tom uh, was stuck it out in the business, it would be him. The flat out, no matter what. It you're, talking been the, you're talking about the SCW referee? No, the one that asked the question. Because he actually was in the business for a hot second. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. But okay. personal life, you know, you know how that is. Yeah. Um, it would have been him no matter what. Um, If I were to leave next year, there's two people I would pick. Um, one would be, and this is going to sound so crazy, and people are probably going to jump on it soon, maybe, Vic Capri. Really? Yeah. Why? Because he See, would my, be... Because here's the thing. In my mind, when I think of final match, it's somebody that made an impact on your career. Well... He kind of did, in a but way. I never hear you talk about Vic Capri. I don't really talk about that many people, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the only one... Yeah, we talk about the Tomasellis a lot. Mm-hmm. That was because they trained me. Vic Capri is um, somebody who's a legend in the Midwest, in the business, yeah. period. Um, he was actually on the first show that I ever went to in the independent wrestling and mm-hmm. was one of the favorites. One of my favorites, um, besides your cousin Mike. Yeah. Although Vic Capri wouldn't give me an a sign autographs, but I guess that's because he's being a heel, whatever. But um, just because I learned a lot from him verbally about the business over the years, he would be one that I would have a last match with. But, oh, plus, I never wrestled him. Yeah. I've wrestled all my trainers in some way. Except I never wrestled Vic Capri. Never really trained me in the ring, but was in my ear a lot and taught uh-huh. me a lot of things. Um, the other person would be Chris Miller. Because we worked together at a school and he was, and you know, there's that term married to somebody. Well, yeah. at the school it was always me and him. And we never got to have a singles match. As you know, him as Chris Miller. Yeah. We all know. Well, I had to wrestle his cousin instead. 
Yeah. But I never got yeah. to wrestle Chris Miller in a singles don't, match. Don't ruin K Fate for Pac Man, bro. Yeah. Uh Pac Man, um, if, if you had a book on Nubby's like are you oh I'm sorry, are you done or you got more to say? I'm no, that, Chris Miller. Pac- Pac-Man, if you were uh, if you're able to book Nubby's last match ever for his career, who would you put him against? I would. Plus... No, it, it has to mean something to him, not something you want. Right. No, I understand. Yeah. So. Question. Um, I know it's a good question. That's why I asked it. This is what you do when you got podcasts. That's Learn. True. That's true. So. For. I think for Nubby's last match, uh-huh. why not make it a tag team match? Uh-huh. And we put him with somebody who's been tagging with him quite a bit in Rocket Pro that they're starting to you know, develop the history between them. And I would say it'd be he'd be tagging with Hot Rod Daddy Andy. Oh. Uh-huh. As far as the opponents, um, put them against the Idols, the team that Nubby has a lot of history with in IPW as well as in Rocket Pro. So if you were to do it at one of those shows, that's what I would do. I can only speak to what I know based on, uh, you know, the history of both of those promotions. As far as... As far as right now, we know Nye's not an idol anymore. How many idols are left, including Joey Roth? Is it still five? So there are, let's see. So it's Kevin K. It's Flash. Yeah. Damian Gray. Yeah. Johnny Nye, it's still very vague. We're, we're going to look at it as if he's not a part of it anymore. Okay, so we'll keep Johnny Nye out of it, then, just for the sake of this. Yeah, um, but I think it's just those three. And then Joey Roth. Joey Roth and Roxy. Okay, so let's say those four. Roth and the other guys. <clears throat> who are your four to take on them in Rocket Pro? And I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer who I think for Nubby in a minute. But while we're on the subject of idols, you got the idols across from you. Who are the four you're booking them against? Pack so first. you got Hot Rod and Turtle on one team, and then the other team. Why not put Joey Roth, who didn't Turtle defeat Joey Roth for the Chicagoland Championship initially, and then Kevin Cade, who Turtle just beat for the Chicagoland Championship. Okay. So it all connects to his career. So you want two people to take on all four guys? Well, not all four guys. It'd be a four. No, I want all four guys are across the ring. Who are the four on the other side are taking them on? Okay. All right. So we're doing four on four. Got it. So it would be Hot Rod, Turtle. You would put in... And who else would be? That'd be good. That's good. Um, That's a... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else like Turtle would have that good history with where there would be like they'd be tagging together um, why not the Tomasellis well this isn't his last match this is just a bonus question okay so and the Tomasellis don't wrestle together no more I don't think Vito. Oh, ever wait, you know, Vito again. is retired. You're right. Yeah. yeah. But he did say that he could come out of retirement. Yeah, I don't think he I don't will. Know. I don't but think they he's went, out. They went. They wouldn't come out of retirement to team up with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, Vito will come out of retirement just to kick me in the nuts and walk out of the ring, yeah. probably. What, what about you, Nubby? Who would you team with to take on the four remaining idols? So it'll be me, Andy. Um. Why does that to be Andy? Why does that to be Andy? I don't know. Oh, you want me to just pick anybody? Uh, so, hold on. You're going to do Andy in the final level? That, that's what you want. That's fine. Well, oh, I mean, the other way I would go um, out of the box thinking, sure. it would be Jack Carpenter. 
Okay. E.J. Jensen. Mm. And uh, Travis T. Yeah, there we go, my guy, my okay. fucking guy. Um, I would go with uh, you, Steve, Nuke, and Maximus Orion. Because we still have yet to see Maximus Orion really do anything to avenge the shit that they did to his mother. I feel like that's still got to come at some point. Right. Um, Koa asked if I was going to shoot on all the indie wrestlers. Uh, the answer is no. I'm just going to shoot on one person, and that is Pac-Man at the end of this episode. I named all the guys. You were wrong. Well, how do you know? Because of who you said. Was it number 20 that did me in? Oh, it was a bunch of them, brother. Was it the pineapple? Uh, yeah, it's one of them. Was it Jay Thunder? Tell you what, I'm going to shoot on you, and if you are exactly right with all your predictions, I'll apologize next week. Deal. Uh, Tommy asked if I would ever wrestle in S- – will Travis D wrestle in SCW? Uh, if he's asking – would I ever do it? The answer is yes. If he's asking, am I doing it? I don't know. I have a plan for next year. I have a goal that I want to achieve. And if I do achieve that goal, I don't think I've never mentioned it here on the show about saying now. If I get myself into a point where I feel that I'm healthy enough to put on a wrestling match, I will have one fucking match. And a yes, if so, who against? Uh, I would love to face my cousin. I think that'd be a great fucking match. But it's not my cousin, and it would probably end up just being fucking nubby. If I had one fucking match, and that's and I and I've, I've said this to Hunter Payne, which shout out to him for helping me, you know, at the gym and everything. And I apologize that I've been absent from him for so long, but I am gonna get back into focus mode and get back there and work out with him and everything. That if I ever get into the shape next year to where I can physically put on a match, because even even Mike told me, you know, he told me that I could do a match right now if I really want to, and I probably could, but I get blown up so fucking quick, and I don't want to make the match look like shit, because I just want to have one match. At SCW, and if it's not against my cousin, I want it to be against Nubby. You would be my one and only match. Uh, Jamie Salmons, Salmons. I can. I know this person. I can yeah. never pronounce yeah. his name. <clears throat> uh, where do you see the podcast at 400 episodes? That's a good question. Um. I see, um, I see us in a studio by the time we're at 400. Yeah. Well, the way, at the rate we're doing this, because we're trying to keep it consistent weekly, that puts us at about, what, two years from now? Yeah. So, it's possible. The views are there. I mean, in order to do something like that, the sponsorships have to be there. The mo- the income has to be there to in order to afford something like that. If it was possible now, I, I've always had the ambition of building a studio in my garage and filming shit from there, getting the multiple camera angles and stuff like that. But in order to do things like that, there has to be money involved. And in order for me to give up a part of my house to do something like that, there has to be that commitment to it. Um, and plus, you know, to get everyone to come down to one centralized location, especially when you live hour plus away, it's very difficult. Um, but I would love to be in a studio by the time we hit 400 episodes. I want to get more video content out, and I know I've been doing that over with this freaking show and Freak Night Studios. But I want to get that pulled over here to JFW and start utilizing our YouTube more. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to guess by 400 episodes, uh, there's going to be uh, a lot more downloads to YouTube, more subscribers to YouTube, because the video content is going to be there more. Um, I also think um, uh, we're going to get a lot more interviews. That's bonus content here for JFW. Uh, still do the weekly shows we do now, but to do interviews as bonus content for people that they can check out on YouTube. Pac-Man? Yes, sir. Answer the question, bro. Where do I see JFW in the net in 400 episodes? Uh-huh. So, um, 
I think perhaps we start expanding, you know, a little bit. So uh, as far as like the promotions that we talk about, so, you know, the JFW right now, we cover a lot of stuff in the Chicagoland area. You know, last week I brought on a promotion out in Western Illinois to, you know, highlight some of the stuff that they were doing out there, uh, Destination 6 Wrestling. Um, so I think it'll be a matter of expand, like we could expand, um, you know, other promotions and, and giving more promotions, you know, that exposure to, you know, our listeners so that you know, they go and see it and then, you know, tell their friends and their friends tell their friends. And then we just help grow professional wrestling as a whole by bringing more awareness to uh, companies in other parts of the state, you know, in other states and other, yeah. you know, parts of the country even. It, it's it been an ambition. And Nubby, I know you listen to my other podcast once in a while. I don't know if you listen to the one that was kind of more recent about the idea of opening up the network on if I won this big fucking lottery and had this, you know, fuck you, let's piss it away kind of money. Um, But what I would love to do with this, and I've mentioned this before about JFW, is I want to go back to having the indie show and the televised show because I want to get that worldwide audience back. And to grow that, plus getting more indie companies involved, I think it would turn it into not only just a weekly show, but probably a couple episodes a week. We have a lot of indie stuff to cover and everything. And if we find, I mean, obviously right now we're at, you know, a little over an hour and 20 minutes. Um, but to find more companies to talk about, it could turn into two indie shows of a week. And it can have three televised shows a week. We talk about AEW and WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, uh, NWA Power, uh, Ring of Honor. There's a lot of wrestling content out there that we have the ability to cover and we could cover to where this almost becomes a daily show where it's your one-stop shop for all your wrestling. And I would love to achieve that. But in order to do something like that, this has to be a career thing. It can't just be a, uh, hey, let's get together every single, you know, weekday at six o'clock. And a lot of it, it's not just scheduling, but a lot of it is like there's other shit in my life that I need to do, that I have to do, like the other podcast, you know, to make the gym and working out and still having a full time job. But the overall dream is to say, hey, listen, Freaknet Studios is now a thing. JFW is now our job. Daily shows go out, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the televised stuff. Tuesday and Thursday is the indie stuff. You know, Sundays is the roundtables for SCW, you know, whatever that shit is. And that way, you know, and if it's our job, then we go to the wrestling shows on Friday, Saturday and Sundays and stuff like that. And that stuff isn't coming out of our pockets, coming through a business expense because that's what the business is. In a perfect world, that's what I aim for. Is that going to happen by the 400th episode? Realistically, maybe not, but never say never. The numbers are growing. We're more involved in everything. And I think collectively, you know, if we work together and that's talking about the other three people who are supposed to be part of this come back into it, the growth opportunity is there. So great question. Good, good question. Uh, second question uh, Jamie had was, uh, if you could interview anyone, either independent or AEW, WWE, past or present, who would it be? Let's go with people who are alive. But any wrestler currently on this planet breathing, if you can interview them, Pac-Man, who would it be? Ric Flair. Nubby? Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, God, that'd be a good one. Uh, I really want to talk to AJ Styles. I fucking love that dude. Yeah. And I know, uh, <clears throat> I know he's a little bit religious too. So I think I'd be able to comfortably talk with him a lot more. I don't know if I, I, I would love to talk to Jake Snake Roberts. Um, I just don't know if I could really dive into the darkness part of his fucking life without getting a little too uncomfortable or sympath, you know, sympathetic with him and shit. Flair would also be a good one too. 
uh, AJ, I just always fucking loved AJ Styles. He is my guy in this fucking business. I would love to see him get one more title run. Uh, Jake, when is Johnny Chaos going to get his high voltage title rematch? Oh, when everyone in front of him gets their fucking title rematch. I think I mentioned that earlier. He already yeah. had one this year. He doesn't need another one. Back of the line. Let's move it forward. Uh, when do you see him in the world title pitcher? Not for a while. Uh, what does he need to work on? Nobody you want to take that one? <laughs> um, his promos. Yeah. That's one of three things I could think of. Um, but yeah, uh, like, you're... The enthusiasm is there. Yeah. Get it. You're passionate. But what Chaos needs to do is uh, calm the fuck down. I know. Embracing it, the it's, chaos. It's, but, a, it's a redundant thing, but it's an accurate thing. You can be uh, passionate, have so much energy, but you can also be calm. Yeah. It, it's one of the things, and like I, oh fuck it, I'll be honest. Whatever, it's it's fine. Um, I mentioned it. Before. I don't even know if I ever mentioned it on the show before, but I know I've mentioned it in conversations about how when certain people yell in their interviews, their voice cracks. And when your voice does that, that should tell you that how loud you're doing it isn't working. Um, Pac-Man, I could say the same thing for you. I don't know if you go back and listen to your Lovely Intoxicated podcast, but uh, do you notice that when you're doing the intros to people, it cuts out at the end? Yeah, I know there's a train coming by, and I appreciate that. You don't got to answer right now, but you realize that, and I, you're a smart person. I'm sure you're going to correct that in the future, but that's the things that, you know, people who are new to the business, new to the concept of things, Pac-Man, like being new to hosting a podcast, so when you do things, you realize, oh, crap, that's what happens. I need to work on it. Those are the things you need to work on. So when you're sitting there and you're doing your promo, it's fine to be excited, but you don't have to yell. There's a way to be excited without yelling because when you yell, your voice cracks. And Johnny's not the only person who yells and his voice cracks. There are other people who do it, and they get that premature-sounding voice that just ruins the promos, at least for me. I could be wrong. I don't want to speak for everyone, but at least for me, when I see you trying to be intense and your voice cracks like you're going through puberty, it kills it for me. Another thing I would recommend I'm working on is lighten up on the catchphrase. Because I do believe he said embrace the chaos on the live stream like seven times. And it's fine to get it over, but just don't use that over and over and over again. As Jake just did when she said, when is Turtle going to embrace the chaos? That was another question. Um, the third thing is, is, is it possible for him to explain to me what his gimmick is? Like, looking at it, it, it I don't know what he is. He's like generic wrestler four. Which is fine, but tell me who Johnny Chaos is. You know, it's, it's okay, and Nubby, you know this. Pac-Man, you know this. It's okay to do promos outside of the the next match you do. Tell people who you are. Give a promo on who you are. I mean, we tried to have him on the show, and we did a small interview with him and everything. It didn't go great. It was discussed. I talked about it with him. I think a couple other people talked about it. It did not go great. He didn't sell it as a work and that's and that sucked but you know as his first interview he did the best he could and i can appreciate that and respect that but nobody knows who he is and it's great to get your friends out there cheering for you that's fucking amazing but it's the people who aren't your friends those are the people you need to sell yourself to and if those people don't know who you are they're never going to you're just gonna be a dude who's walking out to the ring and black trunks with eye makeup on and a bandana, looking like fucking uh, with Will Zapka. Is that the fucking dude from Cobra Kai? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That. Yeah. That's that's who you look like, and that's what people are gonna think you are. 
You're going to be a guy who looks like a dude who should be doing karate, who's not doing karate, who just yells, embrace the chaos. Shoot a promo. Put a promo out there on Facebook saying who you are. You know, there, there's there's little snippets, you know, of wrestling back in the early 90s when people would come out to the ring and they're debuting. And there's a little fucking vignette talking about who they are. Just fucking do that. Establish your character and define who Johnny Chaos is. And if you do that, then the title opportunities are going to come to you. I don't know if that sounded mean, but I think it was pretty honest. Um, I think anybody else would take that as, you know, constructive criticism. Yeah. Jake, however, he's probably going to go cry on the internet about it. Well, Jake could fuck himself. I mean, come on now. <laughs> but he did ask, when is Turtle going to embrace the chaos? Turtle, do you want to fight Johnny Chaos? Uh, I don't back down from a fight, so gotcha. if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. But um, the chaos is going to get shell shocked. So uh, I don't know how this is a question, but Tommy just put Creed versus Xavier when Koa versus Tommy, Gun when Travesty versus Turtle. So I'm guessing is when do we when is he going to see these matches? So Creed versus Xavier, I don't see it not happening anytime soon. I know it's happened before. Pretty sure it's happened before. Yeah. If it hasn't, it's going to happen. It, it, it's going to fucking happen. Koa versus Tommy Gun? Uh, I doubt it. If I can be honest, I don't think Koa's ever going to give him the time of day. I mean, I like Koa. Don't get me wrong. Um, video's coming out. Um... I think Cole is at, now, is at a level now where I don't think him wrestling the new guys is going to benefit his career, and I don't see him being the kind of guy who's going to wrestle, especially since now he's a little bit twisted, and we've seen Koa Black be a thing. Uh, I think the selfishness in Koa is going to start showing up. I could be wrong. Koa could face Tommy if he wants. Hey, you know, I'd respect him if he did. I just don't think Koa is going to sit there and be like, oh, new guy? Fuck yeah, let's do it. No, he's going to want to wrestle Hunter Payne, James Creed, Aaron Xavier, Max Holiday, you know, the guys who are at that level right now. I don't, and I, mean, I, don't, see, I don't see Koa wanting to face Hunter Payne, though. No. I don't no, think I don't, he has it. Uh, you, know, you don't think he could wrestle uh, Hunter Payne? No. I think he'll get his ass handed to him if he wrestles Sunder Payne. Uh-huh. Hunter Payne don't fuck around. Um, and then we mentioned earlier Travis vs. Turtle. When we're gonna see that? Uh if I you know, if I get in shape and uh acid says no, you're my second choice. Ever say never. That's right. Uh outside of the personal message ones, that's all the ones that I collected offline. Now, did I miss any that you guys had? Uh no. I believe you got every single one that I have, and I was following along on the Facebook with the uh, other one, so I think we're caught up on I, Facebook. I, do you, uh, I think good. Yeah. All right. Do you guys have do you guys have any additional ones that were messaged straight to you that weren't on Facebook? No. No. Okay. All right. Let me pull up the ones that I got. And uh, we'll see while you time. while you do that, I'm gonna go look just to make sure, but okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Do we need looking music while we're uh, while we're uh, all looking? Do we need looking music? I don't yeah, need yeah. looking music. I got all my questions right here. Oh, perfect. All right, we won't need yeah. looking music then. I had yeah. something pulled up, but never mind. Was the shell shock? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, I don't know. I was feeling the Jacksons. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Oh, wait, you talking about like the Jackson 5? Yeah. Fuck the Jackson 5. Hey. <clears throat> I do not like pop music. Don't let Leon hear you say that. I do not like pop music at all. Don't let Rion hear you say that. So no messages, Turtle? No, and I dropped my phone as I... Oh, no coast dropped your phone. <laughs> I blame no coast. <laughs> right, shut up, um, shut up, Santino. 
Yeah, shut up, Santino. All right. So first question uh, is asked: Where did everyone find their uh, their names or their nicknames from? Wow. So, um, Nubby, um, I mean, we got time. So tell us the story of Primetime Pimp, Nubby Jones, and the Amazing Turtle. And shit, Mike Brennan, for all I care. Tell me about them all. Okay. Um, so Primetime Pimp was actually just a nickname between uh, a, an old friend of mine. Because uh, he was going with this thing called the Primetime Players. It, it was just a goofy bullshit. But at that time, my AOL screen name had Pimpin in it. So I just went with Primetime Pimp. So that was just, it was just a nickname for that. But then I used it in my backyard wrestling days. Yes, mm-hmm. I did all that bullshit. But a pimp coming out with. Like, Coming out like Triple H was did not mesh well. It would not make sense in professional wrestling. It would just be goofy. That's why I was car back, backyard yeah, guarding for a reason, you know. Um, uh, real, real quick, was it backyard wrestling like the weapon shit or like mattresses in a backyard doing the actual wrestling with friends? So it was a little bit of all of that. It started out just on the grass, like yeah. no ring or nothing. Mattresses, futons showed up. My dad actually bought poles and rope, and we used to set that up for an actual ring. But we had, you know, a mattress for padding, futon. Yeah. That poor futon saw some fucking shit. Let me tell you. And it wasn't just wrestling that went on that damn thing. I'm gonna <laughs> kill this fucking guy. Um. So. <laughs> Um, I did, uh, I did, uh, we'll, we'll get back to yours, but I, I used to do the backyard wrestling stuff, but it was more of like the, uh, we created a federation, not a, like we used like tables and chairs, but we didn't use like light tubes and broken glass. Like we didn't use that bloody gory bullshit. We did like, uh, Hey, we got a bunch of mattresses that we're going to put together in a square and, you know, learn to do wrestling moves and shit. And, uh, we did that at my buddy's house and my his, his dad was really cool about doing like we we're able to store everything there like we got like the the target title belts and shit and uh we like went around on like garbage night and collected like weapons and shit like we took like tiki torches and turned them into kendo sticks and uh we did all that shit and i was uh, i was the owner and did the booking and I think we had about like nine or ten people at one time doing matches and tag matches and storylines and shit like that. And so like that wrestling, I always thought was really cool. But then when you get the uh, the backyarding, like yeah, you know, that stuff I couldn't fucking do. I actually had a federation versus federation feud because we were uh, there was the Piatone Wrestling Federation and we were. Uh, I think like I think we were just P uh I think we were PCW Piatone Championship Wrestling and they were the Piatone Wrestling Wrestling Fellowship. They did trampolines, but we did mattresses. And we were supposed to have this big fucking like match uh show for ownership. Like only one town, one show, and they backed out. So that's a victory to me. Uh God, but I miss those fucking days, man. That's where that's where I learned my like, bumping and fucking suplexes and all that shit. And then when I went to wrestling school, I was like, you know, it's not that far off from where we. Other than posting for each other, it was very fucking similar. So, anyway, sorry. Uh, go ahead. So, so we know where Primetime Pimp came from, but what about Turtle, Nubby Jones, Mike Brennan, all that? All right. So we'll go. I guess I can go in order with all that. Um, yeah. uh, I will say though, when I got into pro wrestling, I did try the Primetime Pimp game, the name. But because the company I went to wrestle for for my first match had the primetime players, I had to choose, do something different or just change my name. So I was big pimping. Um, I think it was Mike Anthony at the time. Um, yeah. Solid. Yeah. It's fucking solid. So Nubby Jones showed up while training with the Tomasellis. I forgot exactly how it came about. I, you know, Paulie has mentioned it on the Power Hour, and I just, I don't know, it seems like every time they tell that story, 
it's one ear and out the other. Maybe I just don't want to remember it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Nubby was actually just the name at the time. But then when I needed an actual name for refing, yeah. first it was actually Tony Keats. They were trying to come up with a name, and I went with that for for like one or two shows at Elite Pro. But then Nubby Jones became a thing. And the running joke was every student, when they make their debut, if they didn't have a gimmick or something, or it was mostly the refs, they would be a Jones. So Martin Jones was a thing. Glasses Jones. uh, Norris Jones. So that's how uh, Justice Jones, but he he became a wrestler, not a referee. Um, Mohawk Jones, who was Jack Carpenter. Um, yeah, so that happened. Then I was, after, uh, something in my life, in my personal life yeah. happened, I was struggling with some shit. The girl was involved, I'll just say that. Um, I was getting back into wrestling full time again. Like I was actually wrestling. I was with, um, Project Revolution at the time. And I just got out of a stable with the Sheik. And I was struggling with trying to figure something new. I was trying to change my life on a personal level, but I wanted to do something different for wrestling. So I changed my name to Mike Brennan as a referee and just the hat. But I still needed a gimmick. So I'm sat there on my bed, looking around, trying to figure it out. My turtle hoodie was sitting right next to me. I looked at it, looked away, looked at it, looked away, and looked at it one more time, like, let's do the turtle gimmick, you know? So that's when the amazing turtle, Mike Brennan, became a thing. I try to separate the two, but it just because every company I was working for wanted me to do the ref to wrestler uh-huh. I it there was no avoiding it I, I don't like you being announced as the amazing turtle Mike Brennan not a big fan of that well I think it'll just be amazing turtle from here on out I'll, I'll start it, telling it fucking but... should be bro and then when you turn heel Nubby Jones but well, we'll see what happens. Like, because when I'm a ref, I mean, yeah, they still say turtle, I guess, but I don't know. Who knows? I I do agree that Mike Brennan needs to go, but that yeah, it it'll still stick around for a while because of the one gear, the singlet I have, because it was custom made by Paulie Tomaselli of all people, and I told him to put MB on it. And it's kind of kind of permanently there. So, don't you? Uh, Pac-Man, talk about you. Where, where did PX come from? Where did Pac-Man come from? So PX came from when I was in high school. Um, there was a group of folks that would call me that sarcastically, and so like, and I knew they were just being full of shit. So I didn't like necessarily embrace it at first. And, um, you know, obviously I have a lot of history and with the guys in LIM and uh, Tony Gabagool, Justin, um, we've been friends. We go back 20 years and uh, went to high went to junior high together, went to high school together. So Justin knew a lot of the guys that, you know, were calling me that and all the stuff that they, you know, would do to bully you, bully me, I would say. Um, but he's just like. You should embrace that shit. And he started calling me PX to get me to sort of embrace that a little more. And, you know, other people started to catch on to it. Um, you know, college, you know, a couple people called me that, but it wasn't as well known. Um, you know, I have a plaque at work. Um, I work at a college and um, somebody that I mentored had a name uh nameplate made for me to thank them for 
or to thank me, I should say, for like mentoring them. So uh, one of the things on there is PX is the name. Uh, so that's like permanently like immortalized onto that. Um, and then, you know, when we started doing LIM, I wasn't sure if I wanted to necessarily uh, go with PX and keep that. But I'm like, well, if it ain't broke, why not use it? So, you know, I, I go as PX when I'm doing stuff with Rocket Pro and LIM. Now, Pac-Man, now I don't want to give any names here on who uh, came up with that, Travis, but, uh, you know, we were, you know, before I was on this podcast as a host, I was a thorn in Travis's side. I mean, t- realistically, I still am a thorn in Travis's side. Oh, uh, yeah, you are. But um, during that, Travis would constantly, constantly gets my name, got my name wrong, started calling me Pac-Man. I don't care. He's like, PX is stupid. I'm calling him Pac-Man. Uh, which then spread into the LIM is, of course, Tony Gabagool starts calling me Pac-Man, which leads Gila to start calling me Pac-Man. And as you heard last week on the Lovely Intoxicated podcast, they started call the whole LIM was calling switching between Pac-Man and PX. So you monster. That's a <laughs> solid fucking name. It, it's such an easy fucking name to realize too when you look at what your fucking name is. And the sad part was is when I first started calling you Pac-Man. I was getting you confused with somebody else. You got me confused with Jay Beck when you started calling Pac-Man. I still remember. So uh, you had mentioned somebody wearing a suit at the front door because Turtle was talking about somebody that didn't listen to JFW. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out who you're thinking, confusing. I thought uh, that was, I'm Jay pretty before. sure it was you. I'm pretty sure you're like some fucking usher or something at the front door. I was, door. yeah. I, I do do ushering for I, Rocky Here's the thing. Pro. It was either a suit or it was a T-shirt that looked like a that like the suit T-shirt. It was a Christmas suit. Yeah. Okay. So it was a Christmas. Yeah. Car- so it was you. It was me. Okay. So I that was, was right when I was talking about the idiot at the front door. You mentioned the idiot at the front door, but the idiot at the front door was not Jay Beck the paycheck. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was calling you Jay Beck, not the other way around. Right. Okay. Gotcha. And then okay. he called me Pac Man. So. It's a solid fucking name. It's better than PX. Well, it, has, it does have staying power. I Pac- like. I do. Pac- I have warmed up to Pac-Man. I haven't hated it, but I've der- certainly warmed up to it. Uh, real quick. Uh, Superfan Steve was called Superfan Steve because he's very opinionated, especially at the shows. Dizzle J is because his name is DJ. Uh, really, really, he wanted to be called Dizzle. Uh, Jay Dizzle. And I was like, no, nah, that's stupid. So we went Dizzle Jay. Then Dally's just because her name's Dallas. For me, I became Travis D because of my buddy Jason, who I uh, was doing the backyard wrestling stuff with. Because when I was wrestling, I was General Assassin. And um, I was driving to, uh, he, I think, it had to have been the first Elite Pro show. Where we're going to, uh, I think it was the warehouse to pick up the ring for the very first show. And I think it was in Mokina off 191st or something like that. Is that right, uh, Nubby? Yeah. <clears throat> so Jason, he was actually there to help set up for the very first time. Because we were both going to go into wrestling together and he ended, up, he ended up not doing it. But while we were driving, I remember we were driving through Frankfurt and he was like, He's like, hey, are you uh, are you set on wrestling as General Assassin? I was like, I'm really not because I don't want to have like a military gimmick and shit like that, and that's not really me. And he was actually the one that came up with the Travis U name, and I was like, I don't know, dude. He's like, yeah, but think about it, you know, there's there's a travesty, and that's you. And you just do Travis dash T. It's all one word, travesty, and I was, I was stuck. And that's what <clears throat> I decided to do, and. I had the long hair at the time, and I was just a guy who just mocked people. And I didn't really do it at the wrestling show, at the wrestling school, but I did it like with my friends and everything, and developed like that Razor Ramon fucking kind of like gimmick. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it just stuck. And then obviously after I stopped wrestling, I never thought about it again. But I always had the hat, the original one. Wait, are you Travis T? 
I am Travis T. Hi, Josh. <laughs> I hate you so much. Thanks. Um, What? Wait, which one of us? All of you. Oh, okay. All of the Thanks. above. Fine. <laughs> um, yeah, and then when I started doing the podcast, I was like, well, we need different names and everything. And when I started this freaking show, Cartoon Joe was Geek Cash Joe, and then he changed Cartoon Joe. Colin was awkward. Colin, I was like, well, I gotta use my fucking name. I'll just use Travesty and uh, stuck. And now it's uh, pretty well known. Except the Rocket Pro, who got the uh, marquee wrong on my name, who got the screen wrong on my name, and who announced me wrong. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of Rocket Pro, I did get a question asking me if uh, I'm ever gonna return to if I if I'm going to be part of Rocket to uh, Rocket Pro moving forward. And I can't answer that. That's not my call. That's not my decision. I don't even know how they feel about my commentary. They've never gone back to me about it. So um, that's a uh, that's a Shelley's decision. That's a Nuke decision. That's a Damian Gray or Damian Saints decision uh, on if they want me back. Uh, honestly, I'd consider it, but I don't know. I got time. <clears throat> All right, this one's a kind of lengthy one, so let's we'll try to get through it the best we can here. If you were to start up your own company and you had four titles, men's championship, women's championship, a mid, mid-card championship, and a tag team championship, who are your first champions of your company? Pac-Man, you go first, man. So, and this <clears throat> is just asking about independent wrestling? Yes, this is just okay. independent wrestling, so... Uh, you start up your own company, you need a men's champion, a women's champion, a tag champ, and a mid-card champ. I don't need the titles and the names and all that, just who they are. All right. So, I'll actually start with the mid-card title. That'll okay. be easy. Uh, Gunner Brave. Okay. Be mid-card champion. Uh, tag team champion. Um, now, I would probably... Go with, let's put, um, let's do Hot Rod and Turtle. Mark. Well, think about it, like, for the kids. Sure, sure. Okay. Women's champion, um, I would probably say, uh, well, she signed a, um, AEW, but I was going to say Sky Blue. Yeah. I mean, if she's still able to wrestle in the Indies, it's, I mean, it's fine. I don't know how those really work anymore, so. And then my men's champion. They kind of, they, they kind of shut that down, didn't they? I think they started to uh, break down on that a little bit. Like, yeah. Yeah, which limited, I think Very sucked. limited. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'd yes. say my men's world champion um, I would put Quinn Whittick on top. Okay, so basically Rocket Pro. Cool. Hi, Nubby. Oh, you always count me. Let's go straight to fucking Rocket Pro. God, you fucking Mark. Uh, for I'm gonna shoot tag so team, bad. my tag team champions will be the Bro Bros. Who's solid? Um, my men's mid card, DJ Price. Gotcha. My men's world champion would have to be. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, me. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> Spoken I, like a true booker, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that kind of. I'm not that kind of booker. Um, I give it to. Joey Dalton. Oh, okay. There we go. And for the women, this is tough because. I mean, normally I. Go sky blue too, but yeah. I'm going with Bombshell Shelley. That's a good call. Good call. Uh, for my men's, I'm going Max Holiday. 
Because you can't compete with the longest reigning three-time SCW Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Mid-card, I'd probably go Muggsy James. Oh, shit. Tag- no. Why Why didn't I say him for the world champion? Eh, whatever. <laughs> but he can always, he can always take it. Uh, tag team, uh, Evil Gains and Evil. If I get John Hudson back up here. And women's, ah, uh, jeez, I just, I really like Angel as fucking women's champion. I really do. If I, uh, God, see, at the same time, I really like Evil Sierra, too. And the problem is they're both fucking heels. So it's not even kind of like, well, you know, they have a great fucking feud back and forth. Uh, I'm going to go Angel. Because I've seen Angel wrestle person a lot more often. So I'll go Angel, Evil Games, Evil, Muggsy James, and Max Holiday. What do, what do we have next week? Is it Actually, just IPW's result? Yeah. Is I'm there any match sure. cards for the final week? Not that I know of. No, of Pac-Man, comp- Pac-Man, you're not here, are you? No, I won't be on next week. And yeah. a lot of a lot of companies take Fourth of July weekend off, maybe. So. So next week we only have IPW results. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have some fun next week. We're gonna book. We're gonna start a company and book a show. Okay. We will book the show on the show. That's what we're going to do next week. Pac-Man, sorry, I won't be here for it. Sam, I'm going to miss. Sam, I'm going to miss it, guys. You can, send me, you can send me your ideas if you want to do that. Okay. We'll take them into consideration. Cool. Uh, quick question to me. Uh, when's part two of the Ivan interview? Uh, we've been waiting for months. Uh, this summer. Uh, actually, uh, me and Ivan have been talking, and the plan is to get together mid to late July. So we'll probably get that released in like August. So that's coming next month and a half or so. Uh, Data E question: Who should be in the Hall of Fame that isn't yet? Uh, for me, it's Bam Bam Bigelow. Bigelow. Nubby. Uh, I'd have to say Demolition. Pac-Man. Cindy Lauper. Cool. Um, this one, I when I saw it, I could not find an answer for it. Uh, I'm going to keep trying though, but uh, favorite story from independent wrestling. Uh, so Ooh, either one good. of you, if you, have a, if you have a story you want to share, please do. I I don't really have like story stories. I just have moments that, you know, but there's like, not like a story. I don't have a Pauly Tomaselli fucking story, but if you guys do, feel free to share them. Are we talking like storyline that or are we talking like a story we had? Uh, all it says is a uh, story from the Indies. Favorite story from the Indies. So I I thought you meant like, you know, story on the road and shit. Meeting somebody, a, a match, something that happened. I don't fucking know, good, bad, and different. A story that happened that you, okay, that so, you know of. So. so this actually happened. After you left, um, well, you know about the world of wheels, right? Yeah. So I was hanging out with Jay Jensen um, on the first night we were out there. And we went to, I think it was Ryan Project's place with Martine and all that. We were drinking a little bit. But the next night, it was me. Jay Jensen and Mike Brooks, who's uh, CM Punk's brother. Uh-huh. Let's get that out of the way. Sharing a bunch of stories from the LW updates, a lot of CM Punk stories. Um, let's the the story about me I, that night is I got so drunk. That. I was puking outside the bar. I fell asleep on Jay Jensen's shoulder in the cab. And then when we got back to the hotel, I was puking my brains out some more. And I pretty much fell asleep by the toilet for a good couple hours. And then I finally made it to the bed. And then we had to do the final day of the World of Wheels. And trying to wrestle, hungover, ready to fucking throw up some more. <laughs> I'm in a match with fucking. Who was I in with? I think Paulie was in there. 
I can't, I believe it. I think it was the match where me and my partner teamed against Jason Hades and Polly Tomaselli. I believe that was the match. And then we were going to do a better, or no, there was a me. There was two shows that day. And the second show, I was supposed to be in an eight man tag, I think, against the Soul Touchers. I backed out because I could not wrestle. I was fucked up during the first match that I wasn't doing. I wasn't right at all. Mm -hmm. And then when I did the Battle Royal and during the second show, I tried to eliminate myself. Polly pulled me in and put me in the corner and had everybody fucking do a splash on me. That sounds like Paul, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pac Man, you got a story? So, um, I could tell a really funny Joey Janela story. I was at StarCast, it was right after All Out uh, 2019, and they had an after party at the hotel. And my buddy and I, we got the VIP uh, section. Now, at that point, like, that was when people started getting introduced to MJF. And we really, really enjoyed his work. We actually got to meet him earlier on in the weekend, uh, which that's a whole other experience in and of itself. Um, But we were walking around with uh, mulberry scarves like he did. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, we walked around the hotel with those scarves all weekend long. Lots of comments. Mick Foley called out uh, my buddy uh, for wearing it during his one-man show, uh, which was really, really cool. But, like, the funniest was we're standing around, and my buddy looks at me. He goes, dude, Janelle is calling us over. I'm like, you're fucking with me. And... um. I like turn around and I see Joey and he's kind of like, like, come over here. And we're like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> you know, and he, I think he was a little drunk, more than a little drunk. Mm-hmm. And he starts like flailing around with my scarf. He's like, the fuck is this? The fuck is, what the fuck is this? I said, it's just, you know, it's the mulberry scarf. He's salt of the earth. He's like, get the fuck out of here. You both get the fuck out of here. And then we were trying to have a he we thought he was still talking to us, but then he turned and started talking to somebody else. But we were just like looking at each other, just like, what the fuck just happened? That's fantastic. That's a good story, man. Good story. Um I don't have a story as it pertains to wrestling. I wish I did. There's just moments that I was a part of that I really did enjoy. Um the two that I could think of is obviously the first is the IPW, you know, being involved in your match with C Red and everything that went down. For those of you who know how wrestling works, understands what I'm talking about and shit. And obviously you guys were there and you saw it. Um, that was probably the most involved I was ever in wrestling. And it's really cool that IPW and the person behind the IPW gave me the opportunity to be part of that. Um, one of the other cool things, you know, behind the scenes was uh, it was at a uh, black and blue Wednesday for ARW. And it was after the show was done and everything. And I was, I was talking to Ivan a little bit about getting everything prepared to do the part two interview and all that shit. And I got to sit down for a moment and actually have a conversation with like Max holiday. And the fact that he talked about how, you know, like, you know, he listened to the show and um, uh, actually knew who the fuck I was. And I thought that was pretty cool because when you sit there and you just do these podcasts, you're talking about these people like you think that they don't know who the fuck you are. 80 percent of the time, that's what it is. Like I sit here and I talk about all these people from CSW, you know. Uh, crash tested, even Rocket Pro before I got out there. Like, these people didn't know who the fuck I was. But it was cool that fucking Max did. Um, and I, it was cool that I got to sit there and kind of talk to him, like, a little bit about uh, 
about the podcast and, you know, like, you know, what I'm doing now in the business as compared to what I was doing years ago, you know, not being a part of SCW and high voltage and all that stuff and doing this commentary stuff and helping with booking, like all this shit is a really cool fucking thing. And just to sit down and talk with him about it just meant a lot. And the fact that, you know, Ivan was also there and his, you know, and, um, and BOW was there. And I think holidays tag partner was there. Like all these fucking guys, like it was cool. Like I didn't drink with them because I don't really drink at wrestling shows and shit. Um, but that that was a cool moment. But I really don't have like stories and shit. So. <sighs> okay, so I got to shoot on uh, Pac Man here. Um, but let, let, let's get let's get the ending done first here. So, uh, guys, thank you for sending in your questions. I do appreciate all that. Uh, you know, I think it was a lot of fun, and I would definitely look forward to do this again in the future. And make sure you do uh, check out our show and shit, uh, you know, wherever you do find podcasts, whether it be iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, you know, wherever. Just search just for Wrestling or Jedi Podcast and follow us on social media, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or God damn it. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, just by searching Just Freak Wrestling at the GFW Podcast. And shit like that. Next week, we'll do the results of IPW, and then me and W are going to book a show as if we owned our own company. Pac Man won't be here. He'll be on vacation, but he'll send in some notes and shit if he likes, uh, which is totally cool. Um, and then don't forget that this coming Sunday, right after uh, the day after SCW Wrestle Rock, we'll be doing the live stream. That's Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, and it is found on Podbean. The event and link to it is on our Facebook page. Make sure you do all that. <sighs> okay, if you guys don't want to break kayfabe, this is where you turn off the uh, podcast. This is where you stop listening. But if you really want to hear me shoot on fucking uh, Pat Ackerman here, please stay tuned. <sighs> you right for this, Pat? I think I'm a little scared, but I'll like give 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 me your best shot. Oh, you let me know when you're ready. Let me know when you're ready. Now, you let me know when you're ready too. <sighs> okay. Now he's ready. I'm ready. Pat, are you ready? I'm ready as I'll ever be. I'm Pat fucking Ackerman. I am really happy you're here, part of JFW. I <clears throat> know that uh, a lot of the concept is, is I don't like you, and I get that because that's what uh, that's what the work was supposed to be about. That's what the gimmick is supposed to be about. Is I don't like you. I don't like LIM. That you guys are nothing but fans and should, you know, toe that line and don't go over the barricade as I've said several times and shit like that. And the fact that people believe that just shows that I did what I wanted to do pretty well. And we had a lot of fun doing that shit back and forth. Uh, but the truest, truth is I do like you, and I think you're a fucking stand-up dude, and I love the passion and love you have for this company. I think Rocket Pro Wrestling involving you guys is a smart decision, and I love the fact that Steve had you on the podcast, which I always wonder to myself – when he talked about people talking about bringing fans on, if he was ever referring to me, I don't know if he was. I don't think he was. No. Um, I can he... um, elaborate on that a bit. Okay, go ahead. I I have the inside scoop on that. Um, is that like uh, like you could talk about it while we're recording, or is this an off of recording thing? Oh no, I can talk about it here. Go for it. it yeah, because he brought it up on his show. Um, so I don't know who exactly, but it has been said to him privately by others in the business that they think it's a bad idea for fans to be on the podcast. Yeah. And I happen to agree with Steve and anyone else that agrees with him. Mm -hmm. Having fans on podcasts it actually makes more sense yeah. in today's world because they tell you what they like. They tell you what they love about the business. I get it. So we tried it before. The very first time with Steve. With, with certain fans. It mm -hmm. was a shit show. I'm going to say this. Uh, yeah. Since we're shooting, mm -hmm. it was a complete shit show. The first time he did it. He knows why I'm saying it. 
because of certain people that were on it because they did not stay on track of what we are talking about. Yeah. And they were more about the drama than anything because they were the ones causing it. Yep. I went there. But you had the Rocket Boys, the LIM. They are true wrestling fans. Yeah. And I believe it it, it doesn't need to happen all the time. Because you got you know you gotta have the wrestlers on it. It's yeah. wrestling. But having fans brings flavor. Yeah, and I think I think having certain fans on uh, I mean, yeah, you're you're right. And I I said when I was doing the live streams, I I said wrestlers fans, I don't care who comes on, come on. Neeser came on all the fucking time, and I love talking to Neeser. And the thing that I love about Neeser is the same reason I love the LIM. I seriously don't give a shit about the Rocket Boys, and that's a shoot. I don't I don't hate them. I just think they're annoying as fuck. But it's, I I I think all kids are annoying as fuck. So no disrespect to you guys in any way. I just don't like the fucking loudness that you guys fucking have. You know, and it's not even it's not even the loudest because I think fans should be cheering and fans should be loud and everything. But when you're just swearing because you're at a wrestling show and your parents won't allow you to do that while you're at home, say, fuck you. You're a piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. Suck a dick. It's I hate that part of it. I absolutely hate that. fucking. And you guys know that they do that shit. I'm guilty of it. I was young once. I get it. Yeah. But I do think they take it just a little bit too far. Yeah. They do. But, we, but back then, I think we were also saying the words that are not acceptable. Yeah. In the 90s, you know, shit like that is just, you know, okay, that's the norm. But that shit, especially at Rocket Pro, which <clears throat> is at St. Joe's Park. And it's St. Joe's for a reason. But the thing is, like, I just that's I just don't like that part of it. So I don't, I don't care much for the Rocket Boys in that aspect. But I love that they're 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 enthusiastic and they love the show. But what I love about Nisa and I love about the LIM is that you guys understand the business. So you could go into these interviews in a work, and you could be Nisa and PX and Gabagool and Gilla Monster and Double J and Tricky Nicky and whatever your fucking brother's name is, Danny. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I may remember his name. I don't care. Um, but it's cool to go in because you guys understand how the business works. So when you go into it, you're going in to build a story. And I think that's the best way of bringing fans in. Now it is. It's also cool to have fans come in and say, oh, I love Gunner Brave. You know, I love the matches he has and like stuff like that. But you're not going to get a full fucking show out of stuff like that. You just won't. You have to have guys like you who are going to create that idea. So when I went to Nubby and I said, hey, what do you think of being Pac-Man on? He agreed. And I think you being here is a good thing. Because I like I like Pac-Man. I still don't like fucking PX. I think it's a stupid name. But that's <laughs> that's your shit, man. And you, whatever you do on the, the Lovely Intoxicated Podcast, you fucking do it. Because even, even though I don't understand everything you're doing over there, it's not my cup of tea. It's not my humor. I still find entertainment in it. In the in the parts that I like, I enjoy it. The goofiness you guys do, it bugs the hell out of me. But <laughs> the, I, I don't get immaturity anyways, regardless of half of who I am is immature. I just don't get it. But what you guys are doing fucking works. People enjoy it. People watch it. I watch it several times to you know understand what the fuck's going on the second time around. Um, but uh, for those of you who chose to listen to this. I do like Pac-Man. I do like Pat Ackerman. I do like PX. I think that what you guys do as LIM is awesome, and I hope you continue to do it and keep doing it, keep putting the shows out there. I wish the shows were weekly, but that's your call. That's your decision on what you guys want to do with it. That's not my decision. I don't own the LIP. I own Just Figure Wrestling. I own this freaking show. You guys do what you're doing. Keep fucking crushing it. Um, get the content out there. Keep doing what you guys are doing. I think it's incredible. And the only reason you're here is because of the person you are. Uh, maybe mature a little bit. But at the same time, hey, fucking do what you want to do, brother. Um, but that's how I really feel about you. And for those of people who listen to this, 
and are bummed out that you know that this this fourth wall has been broken and you know my real feelings about pac-man well i told you to fucking stop listening if you didn't want that fucking to happen <laughs> so that shit's on you and when next week comes along and i'm talking about how happy i am that that dipshit isn't there <laughs> just believe it Is there uh, anything, Travis. Right? I, I, you're fucking better, bro. Giving you a fucking opportunity here to fucking get your name out there a lot more. Now, Grant, I get it. You know, I'm no fucking raw rocket pro wrestling, but uh, I, th- I think I, I think we're gonna be able to help each other out, and that's 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 another big reason. That's the whole reason fucking I, I brought Nubby on because I think mutually we could help each other out. Mm. You know, I needed a co-host this way. Nubby could fucking you know get on a show, which. You know, he deserves to be on a podcast, 100%. You know, I, I don't think this is helping his wrestling career, but it's definitely, I think, helping, you know, podcasting. So, it, it's helped my, my promos a bit. I've still got a lot of work to do, but it's helping me gain confidence. Excellent. So it, it, it's all about us helping each other out. Mm-hmm. And Pac-Man, I, if this helps you be a better podcaster, then uh, awesome. Uh, Gilly Monster is still my least favorite. Uh, I still don't believe JJ and Zoe are dating. And uh, Gabagool is my favorite. Tricky Nicky, I don't give a fuck about. I don't even know who that guy is. I just see him. And uh, your brother, well, he's just a little weirdo. Yeah, but, you know, that's why we love him. Yeah, I honestly believe when he's out fishing, he's not really out fishing, you know, fucking. uh, So... Yeah, I heard. I hear my brother is uh, uh, when it comes to baiting, he's a master. Fuck yeah, he is. But I love what you guys are doing. I love that the LIM is a thing. Um, it's great that it happens at Rocket Pro. I just, I hope it continues to branch out. IPW, uh, ARW, CSW, PAL, SCW. Fucking. If I had one wish for you guys, is to get to the point. Where you take your Facebook name and you eliminate the Rocket Pro Wrestling part out of it. Not because I have anything against Rocket Pro, but I think that when you take that away, it shows that you are Midwest, not just Rocket Pro. So I said nothing against Rocket Pro Wrestling, but I think once you lose that part of your name on Facebook, that's going to show people that you are more than just one wrestling company. No, and I mean, I think we, we are looking to um, expand a bit. I know this summer so far we've only done um, IPW. I'd like to see more shows this summer because... Yeah, but either an IPW, is it three times or twice now for IPW? Ah, uh, so I was at the show in March and I was at the show in May. Um, yeah, they didn't do an April show. They didn't do an April show, no. Okay. Um, so that's why you weren't there. Exactly. Hey, I was combing my hair the day they were doing the April show. Um, so, um, but yeah, no, I mean, definitely want to expand ourselves uh, a little more, get out, you know, see other wrestling. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, right now, um, there's so much wrestling in the area. There's so many promotions everywhere. You know, all over Facebook, any anywhere you go online, you know, you'll see an ad for a show somewhere and there's so much great talent out there. There's so many great promotions putting on shows, um, you know, so it, it'd be good to use our platform to not just give Rocket Pro a voice, but I think really give independent wrestling in Chicagoland, you know, that bigger platform. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and that's what JFW is here about. Like, you know, like people wonder why we don't do any more. You know, we, we don't do a lot of interviews or more interviews or whatever. It's like that's a power hour thing. I'm fine with doing, like, the small interviews. I, I've talked to Mike. I'm going to interview Mike. I know Paulie said something to Steve about interviewing Mike and shit, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, honestly, if he does, more power to him. I think he'd be a great interview for Steve. But I'm going to, and if Steve's listening to this part of it, I'm going to tell you right now that if you try to get Mike to do an interview with you, he will not do it. And it's for the same reason I have yet to get an interview with Mike is because Mike 
Mike wants it in person, not over the computer. So when I interview Mike Acid, it's going to be in person because he will not use Skype. He will not use Zoom. He refuses to do any of that in interviews. So uh, feel free to try. Maybe you'll change his mind. But uh, I'm also going to be uh, interviewing Mike uh, sometime this summer or fall. So we're going to have an Acid interview as well. So, uh, spoiler for that. Guys, is there anything else wrestling related we need to talk about before we wrap up this very long show? Uh, no, I'm good. Max, man? I am also good. Perfect. That's all I got. Uh, I believe we can. Ring the bell on this episode. Been waiting to use this all day. God. You know, it would have been really cool if he did it upside down like uh, Kennedy. Oh, wait. Hold on. Yeah, but, yeah, there we go. Here, Nubby, hit me with it again. I go to. No, well, you got to hold it by the microphone itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by there, the, yeah, there right. we go. Don't bring it closer shaft. to your face. Or are you going to bring it down? Like, oh, yeah, yeah he's going to bring it down. He's going to bring it down as you were doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe we can. Ring the bell on this episode episode <laughs> perfect as always i am travis i am nubby the amazing turtle cowabunga and i am pac-man shut up santino another episode of Just Freak Wrestling, the 200th episode of the JFW Podcast.